Things have changed. The darkness is calling. Can you feel it? Uh What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video and today we'll be taking a look at the updated revision of the V3000 Plus from Lian Li. Now if you guys are coming over from the Lian Li Digital Live Expo at the moment, welcome, I hope you are enjoying the show. So basically Lian Li has just covered uh, some of the differences between the original V3000 Plus uh, that was at the start of the year, you may see my time that's built. Now we're at the second revision which I have here. Now just bear in mind, this case has been beaten around the bush quite a bit. So if you see uh, during this video, you see some light scratches, some imperfections, there's no doubt that they will be fixed up and they won't be there in the final release because Landley have been working on this chassis and I believe this is the same one uh, that they used in their video work for their live expo that they have sent me. And then I have kind of been, uh, kind of been thrashing it a little bit to test out radiator support, uh, test out rigidity and so on. So let's jump in and let's look at the differences from where we saw this case at the start of the year to where it is now. Since the first showcase of the V3000 Plus earlier this year, quite a bit has changed both inside and out and I'm thrilled to be involved in working with Lian Li on this chassis. Starting with the exterior, Lian Li have gone with a complete facelift with a new top, front and lower side panels. The front now has a mesh base which acts as the maximum airflow option. Then we find a new magnetic cover for a cleaner look which provides ventilation from the sides with a fine cutout for the RGB strip behind. Also on the front, Lian Li has toned down their logo where it's not so in your face like before. The top of the chassis follows a similar design as the front with a base mesh panel which once again acts as the maximum airflow option. Then we find a magnetic cover for the cleaner option with air exhaust on the sides. The cutout for the remote control is a nice touch. Speaking about the remote, if you follow the content last time, the V3000 Plus implements a full remote control for starting the PC, fan control as well as RGB control. This module is much much smaller now and fits lower on the top of the chassis. This remote can control both systems as well if you go down the route of building two systems in this chassis. Front AO has also been refined with a more streamlined look with USB ports being rotated and they are now black instead of blue. Chassis side panels are now cleaner with a mix of mesh and aluminum. Compared to the panels previously, I think this new look ties in the front and top much better. Opening the left and right side panels have a new technique and then now latch a via release button at the top of the chassis. This gives the chassis a more premium feel than before where pulling a tab was used to open them. Inside the chassis we find a few major changes. Quite a few panels have been changed from aluminum to steel. This includes the removable motherboard tray and all removable radiator brackets and covers. This has been done to reduce the overall cost. I really don't think these need to be aluminum anyway. For the second system option, the GPU location right down the bottom has been expanded from two to three slots, or if using a two slot GPU, there is an option to slightly adjust the GPU left or right. Although I did recommend to Lian Li to change the included riser cable to a 90 or 180 degree cable for a cleaner look. A suggestion I made in my first coverage on the V3000 Plus was adding an additional cutout on the side where the removable SSD tray is located. We only have listened and we now find a 360 radiator spot here, also for fans or say a DDC FLT. Although I did find this a little bit too close towards the front of the chassis and after liaising with Lian Li, this will be moved closer to the motherboard tray for better front radiator clearance. One feature I absolutely love is the new top radiator bracket. This is removable and adjustable to accommodate different radiator sizes and mounting positions. This means I can have a radiator so close to the main side panel it can clear motherboard VRM cooling and memory modules with ease. If the radiator is installed on the bracket outside the chassis, then the bracket is clipped into place. Two additional screws can be used to lock it down. Lian Li also said a few minor adjustments all around have been made to radiator support and I was able to fit in a whopping 60mm EKXE 480 at the front and the top with an EK 40mm 480PE along the bottom side. Plus, with the mid plate supporting a 360 radiator, I was able to fit an EK XE360 here just for laughs. For storage, a few changes have been made. Two 4-drive cages are now included down the bottom with two 2-drive two hotswap cages can be installed in 5 positions next to the motherboard. The massive 10-stack cage seen previously has now been dropped 
for the two smaller cages, which I think is a better option. We only did say extra hot swap cages can be purchased separately. So as you can see, quite a bit has changed since we saw this case at the start of the year. And I really wasn't expecting to see so much of a difference. Now, when Leanne Lee said, hey, we're gonna send you the second revision, we want you to check it out. I was kind of expecting just a few tweaks inside. I was really expecting that uh, side radiator mount for the 360 next to the motherboard tray, but I really wasn't expecting to see all the different uh, panels, the top panels, the front panels, and the IO has been cleaned up. The logos have been toned down a bit, and then that remote control has also been cleaned up as well. Now in terms of this chassis there, is quite a lot going on inside and I'm finding new, uh, new areas to play with, uh, new things you can do with this, especially with things like the GPU mount here, uh, all the radiator placement. Now I haven't been sent a manual uh, or anything, so I'm really just winging this as I go along. Now bear in mind, I wouldn't take all this radiator placement as final. There are a few things that don't line up exactly right. And I am giving all this feedback back to Lee and Lee on where to make some improvements and make things better as much as possible. Now in saying that, I will be doing a full review on this chassis and that will be the final review chassis when they get their revision right. I'm not sure if it'll be the third, the fourth, but I don't see any point of doing a full review on all these, especially when things are going to change. And especially with that 360 radiator mount, I think it really has to come back towards the motherboard tray so you can utilize a side radiator or a side FLT using a front radiator as well. Now, some of the other cool things, as I said earlier, just things like these uh, GPU mounts. Now, I don't know how practical this is, having a GPU sitting like this, especially with the glass side panel, it's probably not the best, but if you get a really nice water-cooled GPU, this is a really good way to show it off. And this GPU mount is also included, this uh, panel here. It can also go in the normal orientation, so you can sit your GPU uh, normally with your motherboard sitting in the correct way. And that can take up to I think it's got one, two, three, four, five. It's got about six slots for GPUs. Not saying you can fit them all at once, but it does give you that flexibility to have the GPU either closer to your motherboard or closer to the side panel, which is pretty neat if you're doing air cooled or water cooling. Now, I haven't seen the live expo that they're doing on this chassis. As of filming this, I don't know what they've covered. So I kind of hope I haven't covered the exact same things. Hopefully they've talked about a few different changes because I couldn't talk about everything they've done on this chassis to fit it in this time slot. I could probably talk for about 35, 40 minutes on this chassis, uh, everything I like about it, all the new features and so on. But taking a look at price, um, I have been told it'll be around uh, 399 US dollars and it will be launching around mid-November this year. So I think they've got a bit of time. Uh, they'll probably get one more revision out. I may receive that one, I'm not sure, but I'll definitely give my feedback on that one. And hopefully when they get the final chassis out, it'll be absolutely perfect. But anyway, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this update on this V3000 Plus. I wanna thank Yanli for getting me involved in this case, and I'll see you next time.